to focus in on real estate because mortgage rates hit a new record low, dipping to 3.01% on a 30-year fixed loan, according to the Mortgage Bankers Association. And that's leading to a new spike in refinancing activity and also stoking some fear flashbacks uh, to 08 and 09 about the potential for a new housing bubble as home prices continue to hit new highs as well. And here to break down the trends with us in today's Road to Recovery segment presented by International Well Building Institute is real estate investor and entrepreneur Grant Cardone. Uh, and Grant, I love having you on the show. So thanks again for joining us. I, I want to start with the fact that, you know, last year you came on, this was before the pandemic hit, you said home ownership in America was dead. Of course, COVID hit, the Fed pulled to 180, started cutting rates to zero, and now median existing home prices are 35% above their prior peak back before the subprime mortgage crisis hit. So what are you watching for right now and how real are the bubble risks today? So, so Zach, uh, home, home ownership is still dead in this country because the only people that are buying homes right now are people that have equity, great credit, and a job. Everybody else is left out of this cycle. So the people that are moving money, right now we have massive migration going on from big cities into for n multiple reasons, politics, money, COVID, um, concern about their safety. You have tremendous migration right now, both out of cities into suburbs, but also out of metro cities into other parts of the country. California is moving to Utah, Arizona, Texas, all the way to Florida. By the way, we're seeing to hear a thousand people a day moving in. Uh, the, the, the big highlight on the news about home ownership is being driven by the, the upper class because everybody else, look, you got to have 20% down after COVID. You did not need that before COVID. You need a job that is secure. They're going to look at how you actually went through March, April, May, and June with your job. If that was even slightly uh, suspect, you're not going to get a home loan. So on an average home of, say, 300000 you need 60000 cash. You need better credit score than you needed before COVID, and you need a secure job. Yeah. So this will, this will spike for a while until the wealthier are like, okay, I'm done. I got my place. And then it'll sag out again. Yeah, and we've seen that with new buyers coming in here. Of course, obviously, uh, low interest rates is good. But as we see home prices getting pushed up, that does maybe price out that lower end buyer uh, from the market. Um, but beyond that, I mean, we're talking about, uh, I guess, the risks here. And I'm not saying we are in for a repeat of 08 and 09, but there are questions about what it might look like the farther along we move in this recovery, if we continue to see that stall uh, and the idea that we might see delinquency rates uh, for mortgages start to rise. We did see them inch up a little bit here in the month of August versus July 4.87 versus July at 4.71, but still way below the peak we saw in 2010 at 13.8%. So, I mean, when you think about that risk, uh, talk to me about maybe as we get further along, if we see unemployment stay high, what that could mean as well. Look, I don't, I don't think you see a housing crash. I mean, I'm, I, I have, like, I don't, I don't even think about a housing crash. I think about, I think about stalls. I think about a lack of interest. This is what I said the last time I was there. Look, this is going to, we're going to become a renter nation in this country. This is going to feed apartments. The boom today in housing, all the housing starts, 80% of the housing starts in a country are apartments. Builders cannot afford to build new homes and sell them at a profit. They can build 50 units, 100 units, 200 units in a location. That's why you see this happening in cities across America. Renting will become the economic choice and the desirable choice, again, because of this migration. When you have, yeah, Amazon, you know, when you have Amazon moving into new markets, yeah, and, and you, you have, Facebook, yeah, go ahead. I mean, you have more than a billion dollars in terms of uh, assets under management you, you here. Cut, you cut me by you cut me by a billion two. <laughs> I mean, you almost yeah, you got to update your there. website then, Grant. You got to update this website here. But listen, I mean, when we talk about apartments specifically, I mean that's a large chunk of what you guys focus on, right? And we think about that. Obviously, you have insight into what's going on with the renter market. Uh, delinquency rates on rent still pretty much where they were last year, only about a percent lower than what we saw in the month of August. So talk to me about maybe some of those fears too, maybe being overblown uh, in terms of, you know, we see unemployment benefits rolling off at the end of July. Uh, you would have expected maybe an increase in delinquency, but what do you see in terms of the health of renters out there? Well, 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 Trump came in with all that money. So, you know, pe people, the renter, look, there's the law and there's, there's natural law. 
the renter wants to improve the quality of their life. And they know they're not going to go out and buy a home tomorrow, particularly with what you're just saying about price, uh, the pricing increases across the board in almost every city in this country. So the renter knows I don't want to not pay because if I don't pay Mr. Cardone his rent, the next place I'm going to stay at is going to be slightly less desirable than the last place I left. So uh, we're at 95, 90, 98.4% collected on about 94% occupied. We have lost nothing. A national average, I think, is around 82 or 83. As long as you take care of the tenant, take care of the property, and don't overcharge people. You're fair in the exchange. Um, when you have 8 and 9% unemployment, buying a home is not what you're going to do. Renting is what you, where, where that money's going to go. And I can also tell you that the big institutions – or selling, or they can't sell their hotels. If they need to redeem, if a big group needs to redeem cash right now or put themselves in a more liquid position, they are not going to sell a hotel. They can't sell their retail and they can't sell their office. So what are they going to sell? They're going to trade their apartments so that, that, that it looks better on paper. Uh, and I can just tell you that the amount of money out there chasing yield today our cap rates are in our portfolio compressed because of COVID. COVID probably made me a, a half a billion dollar richer on the valuation of my apartments because there's no place to get yield. So the, the, the investor seeks to go to apartments and he's able to pay more because rates have collapsed as well. Hey investors, Zach Guzman here. Are you interested in learning more about the markets and getting the latest financial news? Well, then click right here to subscribe to our Yahoo Finance YouTube channel. Get the latest up-to-the-minute market analysis, big interviews in the world of finance, and information on how to manage your money every day, wherever you are.